powerful commission. And this, in this period of time in Acts, we have Jesus who has just risen from the dead and he had appeared to his disciples on many occasions. Now, one of those occasions, disciples had some questions for Jesus. This is like Jesus' last will and testament right before he was going to be ascended up into heaven. And for 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, he appeared to his disciples and he told them to wait in Jerusalem. To go to Jerusalem and wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit to come. And that may have been a little bit of a question for the disciples because they didn't really know what that meant. What did that look like? How are we going to know when he comes? And so Jesus, he tells them to go to Jerusalem, wait for the Holy Spirit to come. Because you won't be able to miss it when he comes. In other words, that was the implication there. Because the disciples were about to receive this gift of the Holy Spirit that Jesus had promised, and they were going to be commissioned to go throughout the world and proclaim this good news of Jesus. They were probably a little afraid of what was going to happen, but when the Holy Spirit came, that would change everything for them. The disciples thought that Jesus was about to you know, go to Rome or go to Jerusalem and, and just become this political king and establish Israel as what was promised in the Old Testament. But the Jesus had to recorrect or had to correct their thinking and get them on the focus of a mission, a mission-minded band of disciples. He wanted to build his church. If you would stand with me as we read this one verse of Scripture. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Father, do you thank you for this word. Thank you for you speaking to us and, and thank you for this message, Father. We thank you for being who you are and the fact that you want to communicate with us, Father. We pray that you would help us to understand what you want. Help us to be sensitive to your spirit and to walk in your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a couple things I want you to notice about this verse this morning. The first thing is the promise of Christ. What's the promise of Christ? They would receive power. It says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Now, this word power means strength. It can be translated as might or ability or a mighty deed or even miracle. Several times throughout the book of Acts, the same word is translated miracle. It's actually the same word that we, in our English translation, our English language, we get the word dynamite from. Power. Now this is no ordinary power we're talking about. This was power given by God, by the Holy Spirit, through and from the Holy Spirit. This is not power that they were just endowed with, kind of like Spider-Man's ability to shoot webs out of his hands. No, this is not power they were able to use at their own disposal. It was power given to them by God, used by God's power and by God's will. Unbeknownst in a few days from this moment, the disciples would be endowed with this power. They were to experience the Holy Spirit coming down at this Pentecost experience in Acts chapter 2. You can read about it later on. But the Holy Spirit was coming down with fire and tongues of fire, fire the scriptures say. It was a magnificent moment. Peter preached this message of repentance and coming to Christ. And 3,000 people received the Lord in that one instance. That one message. It was a magnificent moment. The start of the church. The power they, were, the power they would receive were these miracles that they were able to do through the Holy Spirit. They were able to resurrect the dead. They were able to heal the, the lame and, and give sight back to the blind and the deaf could hear again. And the demons were you know, exorcised out of people. But the only reason they were able to do these things not only was because of God's power, but the, me the miracle confirmed their message. The miracle confirmed that they were speaking the truth. And that is often true all throughout the Scripture. Whenever there were miracles done, there was a message attached to it. And God would give the ability to these messengers, these, these prophets or these apostles, the disciples, us as Christians, 
He gives us this power to share the message of Christ all throughout the world because only God has these kinds of abilities. The message, the miracle confirms the message. You and I also have this same power, but it's not a superpower to be used to our own advantage, at our own disposal. We are to use it to share the message of Christ. The power is actually the presence of God within us. The Holy Spirit who lives in every true born-again believer. You and I, if you've, if you've professed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit living in you. Matter of fact, the mark of being a genuine believer is that you possess the Holy Spirit. Now, there are several denominations, and I know other people out there believe that you, know, you can be saved and not possess the Holy Spirit. They think that there is like a two-phase process um, for the Christian once they, they were initially sealed by the Holy Spirit and then further possessed by the Holy Spirit. They possess the Holy Spirit as if it's two different things. I don't see that in Scripture. I think it's one event. When you receive Christ, you also receive the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to give you some verses that support that. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Paul says, and you were also, you, believers in Christ, were also included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promise, Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing your inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the, to the praise of his glory. We are marked with him, marked with a seal in us, the promised Holy Spirit, God gives us the Holy Spirit, our deposit, guaranteeing our inheritance in heaven. Another one, 1 John 1, 24. Apostle John says this, The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. Listen to this past part, last part. This is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the Spirit he gave us. Did you hear that? We know it by the Spirit He gave us. The Spirit confirms in us the fact that we are a child of God. And then one of the more powerful and clear verses is Romans 8, 9 through 11. You, however, Paul is talking again, says you talking to believers in Christ, you are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. You cannot be saved and not possess the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit does miracles through us based on God's Word and, and God's will. And for the apostles and the early disciples, the miracles confirmed their message. They healed all kinds of people. Look, go through the book of Acts and you'll see miracle after miracle, but that miracle was often either succeeded a message of Christ or it preceded a message of Christ, but there was a message of Christ around the miracle to give proof and it opened up an opportunity to share the message of Christ. We have a resurrection power living in us. I hope you understand that, the power of the Holy Spirit. And in Sunday school it's talked about uh, the, the, I, I am the resurrection and the life. About the story of Lazarus. Jesus, that resurrection and life. Guess what? If, he, if, if Christ lives in you, the resurrection lives in you. You have the power of the resurrection living in you if you believe. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? And But here's the, here's the kicker. With great power comes great responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility. Here's number two. Because the command of Christ is that they would be his witnesses. I'm trying to get it to come up here. 
Anyway, you know, you see it on your outline. The command of Christ is that they would be his witnesses. The Greek word for witness is often translated martyr. And all of the disciples, with the exception of one, were martyred for their faith. They were martyred for their beliefs in Christ. Only the Apostle John probably died of old age. But all of them were persecuted for their beliefs. Even the Apostle John was beaten. He was imprisoned. And he was exiled to the island of Patmos for years. But all of them were persecuted for what they believed. They were witnesses for the Christ. But they were to go and to share this message because they had seen the truth. They have experienced the truth. They heard the truth. They saw Jesus. They saw him die. They, they did not deny that. They also saw him buried. And they saw him rise from the grave. There was a magnificent change that happened in the lives of the disciples. And they needed to share that experience because it would change the world. But look at what Jesus told the disciples to do. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses. That is both a promise and a command there. You will be my witnesses. The disciples were convinced that Jesus rose from the grave. They were convinced that he was God. They were convinced that the only way to heaven was by believing in Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior and confessing him as Lord. And the only way for people to know that is to be told that. And they were commissioned to go to all the world and share this message. But I want to tell you, church, Jesus didn't just give that message to the disciples. He gave it to everyone. Every believer in Christ has this same commission, has this same command. Go and make disciples. I want you to notice this last section of this verse. It says they were to go to Jerusalem. They were to go to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now that last phrase was basically the outline of the rest of the book of Acts. They were to start in Jerusalem, which was Acts chapter 2. Then they, then they branched out to a little bit broader to the areas of Judea and Samaria in Acts chapter 8. And then the rest of the book is how the gospel spread to the ends of the earth throughout the rest of the world. But that same commission is given to us. We are start in our Jerusalem. What's your Jerusalem? Jerusalem was the disciples' home, their homeland. Start in your homes. Start in your neighborhoods. Start in Gaston, South Carolina. But don't stop there. The command was not just to minister where you are, it's to go to the ends of the earth. We go to the people that we don't really like. The Samaritans and Jews, they did not really like each other. They were, they were pretty much enemies at that time. But Jesus didn't didn't stop that he said go to Samaria and tell them go to the people you don't like go to the people you may not get along with go to people that you may have some prejudices against go to all of these people because all of these are people that God loves all of these people are the people that God died for on the cross he did not stop his love does not stop for anyone or you could say it stops for everyone. <laughs> but Jesus loves everyone equally. He doesn't love you any more than he loves another person. Just because you may have a little bit more or a little bit better life, maybe you have some more good deeds than they do, guess what? Jesus doesn't love you any more than, than another person. He doesn't love you any less either. We're all equal in his sight and he, we all are loved by God just the same. But these are our marching orders, just like they were the marching orders for the disciples, to go and make disciples of all nations. Are you willing to share the love of Christ with all people? Are you willing to go where it may cost you? As a reminder, the word witness was the word martyr. Are you willing to... To be persecuted for what you believe. Are you willing to die for what you believe? I've heard a preacher say one time. And I'll finish with this. If you're not ready to die for the gospel. Then you're not ready to live for it either. 
Are you really, are you ready to die for it? I don't know what the Lord's dealing with you. I don't know how he's moving in your heart. Maybe we need to start at the foundation with your relationship with the Lord. Maybe you don't have a relationship with God at all. Maybe you need to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Let's start there. Maybe you've been convicted today about a sin. Maybe you want to join this church or be baptized. Maybe you want to, or feeling led to go into missions or to ministry somewhere. I don't know how he's dealing with you, but I'd love to help you however I can. You deal with the Lord however he's dealing with you this morning. If I can pray for you any kind of way, let me pray for you. But if the Lord's moving in you, you need to be obedient. You need to be obedient. There's no greater place to be than doing exactly what God wants from you. Let's stand as we pray. Father, do thank, thank you for this day. Thank you for this message and this opportunity. We come here to worship you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sharing your love with us and helping us to be able to share with others, God. You use us to love others. And Father, I pray that you would help us to receive you. Help us to be obedient to you. Help us to go into all the world and make disciples everywhere we go. And God, I pray that if there's anyone here this morning that needs to receive you as personal Lord and Savior, that they would humble themselves and do so. For those that are being called into missions or to ministry or, or to wherever, Lord God, I pray that you would help them to be open to do whatever you want. And continue to move in us. In Jesus' name, amen.